it seems as if people don't want to talk about it is because of their failures, they don't want to talk about, well, okay, well, uh, I gave in and I bought the whatever and now I'm paying 30% interest rate. So it's mm -hmm. making me look bad as a person, makes me look bad as a father or mother. So they'd rather not talk about it. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you smash that like button and click subscribe. For those of you listening on a podcast platform, be sure to subscribe on whatever platform that is and leave us a rating if you can. The more likes, ratings, and subscriptions that we get, the more we can spread the message and grow our community. So we also have a free Facebook group. It's called The Average Joe Finances Network. Check us out, join the group, join the community, ask questions, and become a part of the team. All of our other social media accounts are listed in our flow page, and we have them in the video or podcast description below. Hey, how's it going, everybody? So today's guest is Al Jones, and Al has had his own challenges with credit, right? So he's the author of My Journey from Bad to Excellent Credit, and his book discusses financial mistakes and a case of identity theft that tanked his score and led to many other issues. He knew something had to change, so he started educating himself about credit repair and eventually raised his FICO score 8 credit rating to the perfect score of 850. So Al Jones is a native son of Phoenix, Arizona, and a 1984 graduate of Maryvale High School, and he also served in the Army. So after being honorably discharged from the Army, he moved back to his hometown and began, crea began creating user-friendly games for mobile devices, uh, live shows, playing cards, and more. So Al, uh, you've got an awesome background. You've done some pretty amazing things. And uh, first off, I want to say thank you for your service, uh, for you serving in the Army. Uh, but I'm really excited to have you join me today. Thanks for coming on. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks, Mike. All right. Awesome. So hey, I gave a brief, a brief background about you, right? Um, but I'd like to get a little more into detail about that. So if you could share a little bit more about yourself and your story uh, for our listeners. Sure. So again, my name is Al Jones, and I'm a personal finance author and game developer. I'm currently a resident of, and live here now, and was born and raised here in the Phoenix, Arizona area. And after years of making poor financial decisions and thinking it was the norm, I decided to take action, make a change in my life, and document the process along the way. I'm here with you now with a perfect eight 50 FICO score and ready to share my story with your listeners. Yeah, that, that's awesome. And that's exactly what I'm doing myself too, right? I started my journey into financial freedom and I started it as a blog. I had a friend of mine who was doing podcasts and, and doing quite well. He said, hey, Mike, you should start a podcast too. And I said, well, maybe after I get out of the Navy. He's like, no, I'll do it now. If you could only do like one episode a month or one episode a week, just do it now. Get your story out there. Like the blog's great, but people really like listening to, to different stories and, and different things. So I said, okay, I'll start. Yep. So I, I started the podcast, did a couple solo episodes. And I said, Hey, I want to get some guests on here and I want people to share their stories of what they've been doing because cool. I'm talking about everything I've done, but there's so many different ways to do things and so many different ways to get yourself out of debt and get yourself to a point of financial freedom. Right? So that's why I bring on some awesome guests like yourself to share some of the amazing things that you've done. So actually, that's actually the, the next question I'd like to ask you. So what are you currently doing on your journey to or in financial freedom? What I'm doing right now is I'm doing podcasts with uh, hosts like you. And that's probably one of the biggest things that I'm doing, getting my, the story out, obviously pushing the book that's available on Amazon, um, paperback, Kindle, and audiobook, as well as searching for entities that are out there that are interested in having someone work with them to create financial literacy curriculum. Yeah, that's fantastic. So actually, I'd like to talk about that a little bit about your book, right? So um, I mentioned it in your intro. And 
So your book is basically, you know, your journey on how you got yourself to where you are today, building this perfect uh, FICO credit rating. So can you talk a little bit about your book and just kind of give us some of the nuggets that 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 are in there and and uh, you know maybe it's it's going to be like a good incentive to push people towards checking it out because yeah, yeah. you know cool. it's uh, it's definitely got some good information. I know it's it's about a forty five minute read. That is um, correct. That is correct. Yeah. So it's yeah. I, I'd like to know a little bit more about it. All right. So the book when I initially started years ago, I wrote a book, but it was more technical. Click this link. Um, go to this website. But what happened was after I published that book, some of the websites went down, some of the phone numbers changed. So what I decided to do for this current book, my journey from bad to excellent credit, is create a story, a narrative of my journey from bad to excellent credit. Within the book, you'll see some different workbook elements. So you read a chapter, you take some notes, and after you take the notes, then you can share it with others. So it's a storyline from my journey, from childhood, dealing with uh, parent that had some bad credit issues, thinking mm-hmm. it was a norm, following into the same footsteps, doing bad things with my personal <laughs> finances and coming to a realization that, hey, this is bogus. I need to make a change and, and advance further. And what you'll see what, on the book, uh, it'll say uh, my journey from back to excellent credit. And some of the paperbacks will say 846. I think the audiobook will say 848. After both of them were published, then I got the actual 850 after the fact. So a little sidebar for you. But again, it's about a 45-minute read. And hey, pick up the book on Amazon and audiobook, Kindle, as well as paperback as well. Yeah, awesome. I'll, I'll definitely uh, get some links from you and make sure we have that in the show notes as well. So that's that's amazing. So, you know, you mentioned how in the book you talk about, you know, some of your decisions being influenced by your parents, right? And I, I find that, um, you know, both for myself and a lot of other people that I talk to, you know, a, a lot of times we we look at the previous generation and we get we get this influence of what we should do with our money. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's not the best advice or the best route right. to go, right? And I don't know how it was for you growing up, but I know for me, when I grew up, like talking about money and everything like that with family, like all of that was like taboo. That was not Agreed. something you talked about. Agreed. Sex and, and money uh, you don't talk about. Yeah, yeah, right? So it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I know at least with, with my family, with my children, I'm trying to like, I guess, break the wheel, right? right. And, you know, I, I make it okay to talk about money. Like if, if my children want something and it's, it's not something that's quite a, a good buy for us at the time, I'll explain to them, hey, this is, we shouldn't get this and here's why. Um, it's not that we don't have the money to get it, but you know, there's other things that are more important that we should get first before we move into something like that, right? And I even have my kids reading like uh, children's financial literacy books right now. Okay. So it's, uh, okay. it's super important. And we homeschool. So it's you know, part of their sure. curriculum is personal finances. So um, yeah, it's good stuff. I, I just, I wanted to kind of piggyback on that because you, know, you find that that's a very common thing where, uh, you know, Money's a taboo to- uh, topic to talk about. Uh, not many people like to talk about it at the dinner table, but I'm telling you, sometimes if you have those conversations, it's it's amazing what you can open up and learn about somebody. And one of the yeah. things I've discovered even now is one of the reasons it seems that people don't want to talk about it is because of their failures, they don't want to talk about, it. well, okay, well, uh, I gave in and I bought the whatever and now I'm paying Thirty percent interest rate, so it's making me look bad as a person, makes me look bad as a father or mother. So they'd rather not talk about it. Well, you know, it it, it depends, right? So the way I look at failure, a failure is only failure if you make it a failure, right? If you fail at something, if you don't use that as a learning experience, then it truly is a failure. You should learn from your mistakes, different things that you may fail at, and figure out a way to overcome that and never do that again, right? And that's one of the the beautiful things about failure is it can be an educational experience for you. So I, me personally, I embrace failure. If I mess up and something happens, you know what? It might be a very expensive lesson, but I learn, right? Just like as I sit here and talk to you, I'm, I'm taking down notes. Hey, this is what I did. This is what I messed up on. It's time to move on to something okay. else and uh, okay. take this as a learning experience to never do that again. So 
That's for sure, man. Um, okay, awesome. So now you you uh, you were in the army, right? You got out, and now now what are you doing since you got out of the army? What I'm doing now, I'm doing IT with a lo- local government entity, okay. as well as uh, working on the game app that I've got. I've got completed, and we're working on establishing different contracts with different entities. Uh, we're working on currently a renewal contract with the city of Phoenix to do entertainment services to where we've got a game wheel, kind of like a wheel of fortune game wheel mm-hmm. for our lyrics guru song lyric trivia game. And what they're looking for is for game companies to entertain senior citizens at the senior citizen centers, kind of entertain them along the way. So that's what we've got in place. And we're just doing some finalization of that. So right on. Yeah. So um, now I know you've, you've developed some mobile apps and, and this game, right. Called uh, lyrics guru. Right. And, and now what, what is this game about? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Like what, what it is that you're building? Lyrics guru is a song lyrics trivia game where you try to match the correct word found within the lyrics of the song. For example, in the app, what you'll do is you download the app and then you pick a category, rock and roll, for example. Okay, then we'll give you a song title, Blue Suede Shoes, an old Elvis song. Then what we'll do is we'll give you a list of four words. And words could be cat, dog, run, and step. Okay, then you'll have eight seconds in the app to guess which one of those four words is found within the lyrics of the song. So if you guess step, don't step on my blue suede shoes, you get that correct, you get a point. The object is to get eight correct within a category, then you've got to get eight categories correct and or completed to be the lyrics guru. So that's the premise of the game. Oh, get, nice, yeah, awesome. It definitely, it definitely sounds entertaining, especially yeah. for for people that like to listen to a lot of music, right? And on this one, you're not actually listening to audio tracks. You're just seeing categories mm-hmm. and you'll get a uh, song title and the list of four words, which is all words only, but you're not doing any audio tracks. Well, I can tell you right now that I'll be hearing the music if I'm if I'm right, sitting there. Right, right, I mean, it, right, it'd be in my right. head like, oh, right. I hear that that's word. correct. You'd be singing that's it. Correct. In Start singing it out loud and yeah. probably have people staring at you, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's cool. That's you can cool. stare all the time. So that's awesome. what the, the app is about. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. So um, have you developed other apps too? That's the only one, the only app we've developed. We've developed in the iOS version. We've de- okay. done, created the uh, Android version. We've got a playing card version of the game, as well as the game wheel, kind of the Wheel of Fortune type game that we uh, did the pitch at uh, the Captain Call for Shark Tank. Okay, actually, yeah. So actually, I, I want to get into that in a little bit too. So um, now you said um, when I when I did that intro on you that when I was talking about the cards and stuff. So we were talking about the the cards that you developed for this game. So it's so it's different than the mobile app, but it's similar because is it like um, you shuffle them and it's random and you go through? Or do you have it broken down to like the different categories? Like how how does that work in the in the card game? In the card game, you shuffle them. It's a big deck. And okay. the playing card version of the game, we created those initially after attending an event for those with disabilities. We created the app, the iOS, the Android version. Then I go- was invited to a, a program where we received an award for helping those with disabilities. After the program was over, someone tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, Al, when are you going to create something for those with disabilities? And I thought, Okay, there's an opportunity. So um, then we went fast forward and created a playing card version for those that have visual challenges, colorblind. So the playing card version have what they call color barrier free colors for those that are colorblind that they can see those colors as well. We discovered that they can be used for senior citizens for cognitive rehabilitative therapy. So you play in the card, you see the uh, song title, Blue Suede Shoes, and the senior will say, well, you know, I was dancing at a party during that time, and it kind of helps out with their memory. So, Oh, that's great. Yeah. So the play card, you shuffle the playing card version of the game, you shuffle the card, the dealer reads off, you know, pulls the card, reads off the category, rock and roll, okay? Then reads the song title, Blue Suede Shoes, 
and then we'll read off the four words and whoever is the first one to raise their hand, whatever. And we kind of keep it open so you can kind of create your own house rules. Okay. And whoever guesses the one correct, then they, they get that card. The object is to get eight uh, of the different sets, rock and roll, um, hip hop, and so on. Then you're the lyrics guru. Okay. No, I like that. Yeah. And, and yeah, being able to create your own house rules is cool unless yeah. you're playing like a game of Uno because that then it gets cutthroat. <laughs> and then you got to go to the developers and say, hey, what what is what is a, a draw four really mean? Uh, right. right. <laughs> so don't be surprised if people start hitting you up saying, hey, we, we met our house rules for this and uh, we want to know what's what's your take. So and we're always open to creating different variations of that game. We did that one after working with people with disabilities that had the um, color scheme for those with visual challenges. We also want to create one that has full color. And so if by chance you've got singer songwriters like a Billy Joel, we want to create a Billy Joel edition. It's like a, a Prince oh, edition. That, with that all. would be me all day. Okay. I'm, I'm originally from Long Island, New York. So, you know, Billy okay. Joel is Long Island <laughs> yeah, sweetheart. Yeah. So. <laughs> singer songwriter, all Billy Joel's song titles, all his, you know, all this stuff. So that's the kind of stuff awesome. that we would like to create if we can get some a go ahead and, and a green light to yeah. do some partnerships with us. No, that sounds fun. And, and like uh, just the, the, the entire game sounds fun. Definitely sounds like something like that would be a good family night yeah. type game, right? Yep, yep. So yep. awesome. So now have you have you been able to use this as a catalyst towards your own personal uh, financial freedom? Let's take a brief moment to hear from our show sponsors. What's going on, everybody? So today I want to talk to you about the podcast editing service that we use for the Average Joe Finances podcast. That is editpods.com. And what I really like about them is it's a subscription-based service, so the prices are fantastic. And not only do they do the podcast episodes for us, but they also make us videos, audiograms, social media caption videos. They do our show notes, thumbnails. It's just fantastic products. Go check them out at editpods.com. What's going on, everybody? So today I want to talk to you about Buzzsprout. The Average Joe Finances podcast recently switched over to Buzzsprout, and I got to say, I am super happy with the progress. Our podcast is now on every single major platform and reaching audiences that we couldn't reach before, which is just super awesome. So thank you to Buzzsprout for being such a great platform. But also I want to say, hey, guys, if you sign up for Buzzsprout and you sign up for one of their paid plans using our link, you'll get a $20 Amazon gift card. So go check them out. It's averagejoefinances.com slash Buzzsprout. And we'll make sure the link is in the show notes below. Let's get back to today's episode. Yes. And the revenue generated for that along the way has really helped whittle down the debt that I've got the minimal awesome. debt that I've got the I think the mortgage actually the mortgage is the only debt that I've got I initially had uh, six percent and got the A50 FICO score and decided to leverage that and mm -hmm. was able to get a refi on my high rise condo unit for two point six yeah deal. yeah good deal yeah that's awesome um so okay I, I wrote this down because you you had uh, you mentioned it briefly and I know this is something I wanted to talk about with you is that you had a pitch on Shark Tank for a yeah. casting call, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, how, how was that experience for you? The experience, it was a great experience. I was able to meet, if you've ever watched YouTube, some of the previous episodes, mm -hmm. I was the pitch group immediately behind Meta, he's called himself then, Meta World Peace uh, back then as well. He was the I guess a celebrity with the group that pitched the uh, butter cloth men's shirt line. Mm -hmm. So he was the pitch group immediately in front of us, got a chance to meet him you know, behind behind their group. And I was just gonna ask that, did you actually get a chance to to meet him and talk with him? Yeah, yeah. We took a picture, That's he took cool. a picture with me, sat at, you know, as we were standing, kind of moving along the line. Um, so I got a chance to get, like I say, get a picture and chat with him for a few. So what happened in the whole process, I got the invitation to attend a casting call in Palm Springs. So I load up all my stuff, go to Palm Springs with the giant wheel for the show. I'm standing in line, meet Meta and the Buttercloth team. And when you're going through, initially what I had wanted to pitch 
was a licensing deal. If you ever watched the show, Kevin O'Leary, uh, Mr. Wonderful, he goes by, want to do a licensing deal with Mr. Wonderful for a brand licensing deal where they would license the Lyrics Guru brand to create a Lyrics Guru TV show to rival Beat Shazam. Beat Shazam was really possible, uh, popular back then, so we want the show to rival Beat Shazam. So anyway, we're going through the whole process. Minutes before you're going in, the casting call staff say, all right, everybody that's going in, you have to ask for money. Ah, I didn't need any money at the time, but doing pretty good you know, financially. I just wanted to do a licensing deal. So going through and they said, no, you can't just pitch a licensing deal without money. You've got to ask for money. So I had to quickly come up with something to ask for. I said, all right, all right, I'll go in and ask for $5,000. Yeah, right. I went to talk to some millionaires and billionaires and ask for five Gs. That's crazy. Then I thought, okay, how about 50? Now nah, you can second mortgage your place for 50. So I asked for 500, finally asked for 500 when it was time for me to pitch. They didn't go for it. They didn't go for the licensing deal. But hey, Meta and the Buttercloth team, they got a deal. So hey, go for that. Good for them. That's uh, so, so I am, I am a big fan of the show. Um, I, I love Shark Tank actually. And uh, so that's, um, that's really interesting that, you know, you had to go in there and and ask for money. I don't think I've ever seen any, anybody go in there and not ask for money. So I guess that's kind of, you know, it's, it's part of the whole thing, right? It's part yeah, of the show. And I want to try something new. I thought I would get some attention by not asking for money and do a strict licensing deal. All the other sharks that were out there, you know, Mark, um, Damon, I didn't want to talk with them. Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary was my go-to guy, Mr. Licensing. And I want to pitch him, but... With this process, you've got to go to the casting call crew that kind of does the initial weeding. If they like it, then they move forward to the lot to the actual broadcast. So, gotcha, gotcha. All good. Hey, um, but you know what an experience, right? To be able yeah, to do yeah. that, and and just some of the people that you were able to meet. I mean, that's that's just super cool, super cool. So, so. hey, um, all right. So there was, uh, so you've you've got you've got the game that you've got going on. Right. Uh, you got to meet some really awesome people when you went on Shark Tank. What else are you doing right now? Um, are, are there any like other asset classes that you personally invest in? Do you do you buy any crypto or are you in uh, the stock uh. market? Do you have any real <laughs> estate? What, what else are you doing on your journey right now? Uh, financially, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting my money primarily on this one company, and I'm not a certified financial advisor, that's my old disclaimer. But what I'm doing is I'm putting the large majority of my funds in a company called Stereo Taxis. And the stock symbol is S as in Sam, T as in Tom, X as in X-ray, S as in Sam. Uh, it is a medical equipment device company. And it's a quick summary. And what they do is they created a device where a, a catheter is inserted and the surgeon can control the movement of the catheter remotely with the click of a mouse. Pow. So I could be in LA Yikes. and the surgeon could be in China with a you know, high speed internet connection and do heart surgery remotely. And it's all controlled with magnets that are placed around the, the patient. Wow. Very well. Uh, yeah. So, so I guess it's, 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 um, uh the level of magnetism, like, is, yeah. that, is that what they use to move the catheter around? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yep. That is, uh, it's crazy. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, a bad it's, internet it's, connection all of a sudden. Oops. So yeah. yeah no, it's, it's just, it's just scary that, you know, that we're at a point right now where technology has advanced so much, uh, including in the medical field that we have the, uh, the ability to do things like that. It's absolutely amazing. And, it's part of the ingenuity, right, of, of uh, folks that are entrepreneurs that are, like, really pushing the limit on what they can do, right? And, you know, it's the, – the mind is a beautiful thing, and it's just amazing to watch what some people can do with some of the skill sets that they have. And uh, something like that, man, just wows me. just blows my mind. Absolutely so I, amazing. Initially, I got, years ago, I got into it uh, around eight – Shortly after, you know, I'm on the phone with a brokerage firm. Shortly after, and I do very high risk, high reward stuff, speculative. So I, I make the purchase, 
actually, before I made the purchase, I was on the phone with them, couldn't do it online. So on the phone with the person that, and the guy I was talking to says, okay, you know, the kind of high pitch, like, are you sure you want to pull the trigger on this? And I'm thinking, you know, who is this guy? What are you trying to tell me? It's like, yeah, I make the purchase. So I make the purchase and just maybe two days, if that, it tanks. And it, right, right. And with the brokerage firm that I got, they've got the, um, I think it's a call it a two day uh, holding period, settlement period, they call it. So I couldn't do anything within those two days. So it just tanks. So it got to the point to where it went from eight, then it dropped off NASDAQ, went to over the counter and went below 50 cents. Very ow, very yeah. ow. So rather than freaking out and selling, I just kept dumping money into it, buying more, buying more. People were chirping in my ear, Al, sell, 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 <laughs> you know? And I'm thinking, no, no, no. But popping Tums, you know, like candy, just going crazy. 1,000 milligram peppermint Tums. Oh, you my know? <laughs> Popping yeah. them like candy. So settle, anyway. Settle that stomach a bit. Amen, brother. So um, it goes below 50 cents. I'm still dumping money into it. And now it's like 10, it went up to like 1050. So after buying them on the dirt cheap, everything is cyclical for the most part. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I bought the dip. You know, you know, what's funny is that, you know, a lot of people at that point, they would have, they would have dropped out long uh, before, you know, any of that. And you just kept buying and buying and buying when it was so low. But you know what that did is that took your entire, you know, cost average, your dollar cost average of those stocks and just lowered it each time you made one of those purchases uh, under 50 cents. Yes, sir. And um, yes, I don't know what your your average do dollar cost was when it jumped up. But, you know, if your initial one you bought at $8 and change, and then it's up to like $10.50, uh, you're doing pretty darn good. I ain't hurting. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. And, and you know, um, I, I don't know what kind of research you did on a company like that. Cause I, when, when I get into something that's speculative, that's when I'll actually like actually sit down and try to look at some numbers because I, I kind of freak out when I, I don't know too much about a company uh, that I'm going to invest my money into. So it's funny because I had a fun money account or I still have a fun money account that I, that I invest in with a, with my brokerage and this particular um, account, I, I was doing like all my speculations and just like the stuff that I thought was going to be like my bets that, Hey, this is money I can throw away, whatever. Well, what that's actually turned into is over the course of time, I've actually wound up, you know, as I was selling some of the more, uh, I guess, volatile, uh, stocks, they, they somehow wound up back into stuff I'm more comfortable with, like yeah, yeah. Uh, some index funds and REITs. I love REITs. Um, and I've got them now in a, in a spot where, you know, this past year I'm up over 30% and I'm getting monthly payments, um, okay. that I reinvest. So okay. somehow what, what I went into, like, this was supposed to be my, I'll play around with it, uh, is, is doing better than, than, uh, one of the accounts <laughs> that my financial advisor actually runs for me. So it's, uh, it's, yeah. wild. it's yeah. wild. And what, as a quick little rundown of how I do it, how I came to stereo taxes, uh, back to what I knew, my um, graduate degree was in uh, management with an emphasis in health service administration, running hospitals. Okay. So I was familiar with the, to some degree with the health service industry. So I've got a brokerage account, do it myself, don't depend on somebody else to drive the bus. So I go into the brokerage sure. firm, go to the online brokerage, sort by, sorted by industry, did health service whittled down to see which one, which of the subcategories were doing the best, equipment was doing the best, drilled into that, found a company um, that was doing the best in that subcategory, just by chance. It was Stereo Taxis at the time. And then it just expanded the chart, saw it was down, it was going up, okay. Um, did some moving average envelope, I think it was seven, uh, I got to use, I use uh, one day, five minute a uh, moving average uh, seven, I think it was, and the other one, part of it was the 0 0.75. And if it stays within that range, three candles and is going up, let's roll. Yeah. So in summary, that's how I play it. 
You know, I'm not analyzing PE ratios, uh, you know, analysis paralysis. No. Uh, that, that's that's a common thing uh, for for uh, people that I brought on the show too. Like we talk about that a lot, especially in real estate. You have analysis paralysis where you're like scoping out a deal and a lot of times you, you'll, you'll psych yourself out because you're sitting here looking at the numbers. Now you don't want to fudge numbers to, to make it work for you. Right? right. Right. But you know, a lot of times you just get caught up in the, well, what if, what if, what if, what if there's always a, what if right now you should be mindful of that. You should always have that in the back of your mind. Well, what if this, then, then that, what if this, then that you should always have a, then if there's a, what there should be a, then if you're asking yourself, what if, and there's no, then afterwards, then you, it's not something you should probably get yourself involved in, right? And that's that's one of the whole things about having like multiple exit strategies, right? So for you, when it came to this, what if it tanks, then buy more? What if it tanks even more, then buy more? Buy the dip, baby. What you did by doing that is you kept lowering that dollar cost average to the point where you were back in the positive once it just went up a little bit. So that's, yep. I mean, that you, you can't beat that. Um, now, there's some times where it'll just keep tanking and, you know, that sometimes you have to realize when it's time to cut your loss. But for those of you that are listening, you know, that's not financial advice. You, you, you got to <laughs> do your own plan. Right. Right. right? right. Um, and, and maybe go see somebody for help if you need it. Um, but for, you know, for what you're doing, uh, I mean, it obviously worked. Right. And now look at you right now, you're at a point where you've got a perfect credit score. You're, you're debt free minus your mortgage. I mean, that's, that's where you want to be. Right. And, and retiring at age 55. At age 55. 55. You hear that people age 55, uh, which which is actually from, from our previous discussion is coming soon. Right. So you're actually yep. getting ready yep. to retire here. Very December shortly. 29th. Actually, December 30th. Retire yep. on the turn. Discern, turn 55 on December 29th and retire on the 30th. How about that? That's amazing. That's awesome. So. All right. So I got to ask then. Right. So since it's coming and, you know, you got you got like six months, man. And then and then it's here. What's what's retired life look like for Al Jones? What like back what do, you of, to do the back of my eyelids? I'm gonna sleep. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna that's the first thing. I'll get that out that's of the fair. way. Get the whole sleep. You know, varying degrees of sleep deprivation. So I'm gonna get some <laughs> sleep first, and then take it from there. Right on. No no sailboat or anything like that sailing around sleep. the world. Sleep, brother. You can sleep on the boat. It'll rock you to sleep. Uh, just, you know? we'll, we'll start with sleep first. And I'll go from, <laughs> no, we'll that's go from awesome. There. That's awesome. Hey, so I just want to say congratulations to you for all your success that you've had. I mean, you know, you, you set like this goal in mind and you kept attacking it and attacking it and attacking it and, you know, to get yourself to where you are now. So um, definitely the book is a good read for anybody that's interested in like trying to figure out how to get your credit score up and even up into the same category as where Al's at up into a perfect score. Um, so I definitely want to make sure people can check that out. So speaking of that, Al, um, and actually there's one more thing I want to ask you before I go into that, but is there any last tips or tricks that you would recommend to somebody who's listening to this show that is in debt and they want to figure out how to raise their credit score and not be in debt anymore? A couple of things. One is if you're in debt and bill collectors are calling you, do not avoid the calls. Face your issues head on. Talk with them. And that's the big thing. Talk with them. Tell them your situation. And in many cases, they'll actually work with you. So that's one of the big things. The other thing is generate your credit reports and scores from each of the three separate, notice I would say separate, through each of the three separate credit bureaus, Equifax.com, Experian.com, TransUnion.com. Because when you order your credit reports and scores from each of the three separate credit bureaus, you're gonna get a confirmation number once you've made that order. Once you dispute the items, you're gonna need a confirmation number. So that's why it's important to get them from each of the three separate credit bureaus. Don't do the three for one that you get from other services out there. Go directly to the source and get that. Okay. The last thing I would recommend, in addition to buying the book and whatnot, is to consider doing what they call the settlement agreement with those that are calling you. Because let's say you owe a thousand dollars and you only have seven fifty. Talk with them saying, hey, I'm willing to work with you, but I only have 750. All right. So 
if I pay you and use a use a personal check, don't use a money order, okay? Because money order, you have no tangible proof that you paid just the receipt that the money order was purchased. So use a personal check to use it to pay or Western Union, like quick collect, something where it's tangible proof. So talk with them saying, hey, I'm willing to pay you the 750. If I pay for the 750, if I give you the 750, will you clear the uh, delinquencies on my credit reports? If mo most of the time they'll say, yeah, they just want something from you. So they say, yeah, then you get that in writing, get them to reply back that it's a go. Then you make your payment and uh, it more than likely will wash out all of the, the stuff from that collection agency on your reports. Yeah, right on. So normally, so I, I have a buddy of mine who uh, used to be a debt collector. And, you know, one of the things is like when you, when, when a debt collector now has your delinquency or your debt, they purchase that mm -hmm. debt from the company right. that you originally did it with. So a lot of times they buy it for uh, quite a bit less than what mm -hmm. you actually owed, but because this is how they make their money, right? Right. So if you come in on a debt that is, you know, a thousand dollars and you offer them 750, if that 750 is usually, if it's over what they paid mm -hmm. for your debt, they'll, most likely accept that yep. because they've made a profit now and then they don't have to waste their time calling you anymore. Right. Right. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. It's, you know, uh, when you think about it now, don't try to like super lowball these guys <laughs> because this is, this is how they make their living and they could just tell you to kick rocks and say, no, you owe a thousand, you pay a thousand. Right. right. So, you know, uh, keep that in mind and, and, you know, be polite when you're talking with a debt collector. I mean, this isn't like, they're out to get you or anything. I mean, you racked up that debt. You should own it and be responsible for it, right? Um, so keep that in mind. You're talking to another person on the other side of the phone. That's why I like when you said that, you know, you have debt collectors calling you. You should actually pick up the phone mm -hmm. and, and face the music, right? Because uh, at the same time, you know, you need to be responsible for, for what you've done. And I can tell you right now that when you stand up and you take responsibility for your own actions – the the weight of relief that comes off your shoulders when you do eventually get this delinquency off your report or or pay something off is that much more gratifying because you owned it instead of trying to run. So I, I just I, I want to point that and, th and that's my personal take on it. Um, you know I I believe that if you do take on debts you should pay them off because it is something that you you know you did to yourself. That's Absolutely awesome. Like those, those tips that you gave are fantastic. I really appreciate it. Um, now, here's the most important thing, right? Because we talked about your book. We talked about your game and everything. I want to be able to provide that uh, to my listeners. And I want to make sure that they can find it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all that in the show notes. But could you share with us where they could find a copy of your book and where they can go check out your, your mobile game? Okay. They can check out the book on Amazon.com. And just search for My Journey from Bad to Excellent Credit. You've got paperback, you've got a Kindle, and you've got audiobook. The app, you can pick it up from the uh, Google Play for the Android and the App Store for iOS. And it's a free game. Again, it's a song lyrics trivia game called Lyrics Guru. And you can easily find it on both Google Play and the App Store by typing in Three separate words, lyrics, guru, app, so A-P-P. -P. All right. So, hey, like I said, I'll make sure I have a link to that in the show notes. Uh, I think I could post the link to the Play Store in there as well. So, I'll, I'll try to make it easier so people can just click it and, and get in there. But if that's not, cool. that's how you search for it. Look for Lyrics Guru app. I'm definitely going to go download that game, and I'm, I'm going to try to see if I can play it tonight uh, with okay. the family. It sounds okay. fun. Um, definitely definitely something that's right up my alley. So, um Al, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you today. I, I generally really respect people's time, and I really appreciate the time that you took to, to speak with me today and share your story with our audience. My pleasure. And sidebar, the, yes. app, uh, the website is www.lyricsguru.mobi. All right. Got that out of the way. We'll, we'll get that in there too. So you All can right. go straight to the source, right? To the website, sure. which I'm sure. sure will have links to the actual right. app, the right. Play Store and everything. Correct. So yeah, awesome. Correct. Awesome. Well, hey, Al, 
like I said, truly appreciate it, man. Thank you for taking some time and chatting with me today. My pleasure. All right. Aloha. Aloha.